Electric car sales are already stalling in major markets, but it's not just about range anxiety or high upfront costs. A new thread is emerging, one that could crush the electric vehicle revolution before it even gets off the ground. I'm talking about excessive repair bills and a crippling shortage of mechanics qualified to fix these high-tech machines. So, what happens when your green dream breaks down and there's no one around to fix it? Let's get into the dark underbelly of the electric car revolution skyrocketing repair costs, and a shortage of qualified mechanics. So, EV makers have been talking a big game lately, especially when it comes to electric vehicles (EVs). They've been making bold claims that EVs will be cheaper to maintain, easier to fix, and more reliable than those good old traditional internal combustion cars. But, spoiler alert, things haven't entirely lived up to the hype. In fact, EV owners are finding themselves staring down some pretty hefty repair bills, and here's the lowdown on why that's happening. First, let's give you a quick analysis of how often EVs need to be repaired. In 2023, the frequency of electric vehicle repairable claims shot up to 1.97% in the US and 2.86% in Canada. That's more than a 40% jump from the previous year according to the plugged-in EV Collision Insights report by Mitchell. And if you think that's wild, hold on to your hats because compared to 2020, the frequency of claims for repairable EVs has more than tripled. When it comes to claims severity, EVs are taking the lead by storm. Last year in the US, the average repairable severity for EVs hit $6,018, while their ICE counterparts trailed behind at $4,696. That's a pretty penny. And get this, while the seriousness of EVs went down by about 5% year over year, it actually increased by 3% for those good old ICE-powered vehicles. Go figure. So what's causing this increase in repair bills for EVs? With EVs still relatively new to the scene, there simply aren't enough skilled professionals who know how to work on them effectively. When something goes wrong with your EV, it can mean shelling out big bucks for repairs, because finding someone with the right expertise can be like finding a needle in a haystack. This shortage isn't just a problem in one corner of the globe. It's a worldwide issue. Let's take a look at the UK, for example. Only a measly 10% of mechanics there are licensed to work on battery electric cars. And as the number of EVs on the road continues to climb, this shortage is only going to become more pronounced. In fact, some sources predict that the UK will be short of 35,000 trained professionals once internal combustion cars get the boot in 2035. And let's not forget about the tech side of things. Electric vehicles are like treasure troves of high-tech wizardry, with batteries, inverters, and motors all into complex electrical systems. Fixing them isn't just a walk in the park. Then there's the safety factor. Mechanics are driving into high-voltage territory, which adds another layer of complexity and risk to the mix. One wrong move and zap! You've got yourself a shocking situation. Now let's talk collisions. While electric cars might seem sleek with their streamlined designs and fewer moving parts, that simplicity can spell trouble when it comes to accidents. Even a minor fender bender can send shockwaves through the battery, turning a tiny bump into a major headache. And when it comes to electric car batteries, they're not exactly forgiving. One little flaw, and it's game over. You're looking at a full-on replacement, not a quick fix. And if all that wasn't enough, throw in the scarcity of spare parts in the world of electric vehicles, and you've got a recipe for repair disaster. Waiting for that crucial part to arrive feels like waiting for a bus in the middle of the desert. Long, hot, and frustrating. And when repairs do finally happen, get ready for the long haul. We're talking weeks, not days, of downtime, leaving you stranded without wheels and draining your bank account faster than anything. And that's not all. The insurance costs also add up to the whole scenario. Drivers would soon find themselves paying higher premiums for their electric vehicles as the insurance industry adapts to the shift from gas-powered cars to electric alternatives, according to a recent report. Why? We have already discussed the reasons, but let me give you a quick recall. EVs come with a hefty price tag, and fixing them up isn't exactly cheap. EVs are like high-tech computers on wheels, and their batteries are the heart of the operation. 
If something goes wrong with that battery, it could mean big trouble. Repairing or replacing it, you're looking at some serious cash. Then there's the shortage of skilled mechanics who know their way around EVs. With fewer experts available, their services are in high demand, and that means higher repair costs for you. So, insurance companies reassess their rates every year, taking into account factors like theft rates, repair costs, and claims. As more people make the switch to EVs, insurers might have to bump up those premiums to keep up with the trend. Critics of gigacasting are also raising some valid concerns about the future of EV repairs. And it's got a lot to do with the way these cars are built. You see, with gigacasting, large sections of the vehicle are affected even in minor collisions, which can make repairs a whole lot more complicated and costly. According to Gartner, a renowned research and advisory firm, they're predicting that by 2027, the average cost of repairing serious accidents involving the body and battery of an EV could shoot up by 30%. Now that's no slight increase, and it's got some severe implications. For starters, if a vehicle suffers a collision, it might be more likely to be a total write-off because the repair cost could exceed the car's residual value. And trust me, that's not a situation any car owner wants to find themselves in. Now, let me tell you something even worse. You know, when a Tesla gets into an accident, it's like it suddenly becomes just another car in the scrapyard. I mean, picture this. Lee Carter, this dude, he went wandering through this vast junkyard filled with wrecked Teslas. And guess what? Most of them had what you'd call light damage. Now, ordinarily, fixing up that kind of damage on your regular car would be a walk in the park, but with Teslas, it's a whole different ballgame. Tesla owners find themselves in a bit of a pickle. Between the sky-high repair costs, the struggle to find spare parts, and the lack of solid support from the company, it's no wonder many of them are waving the white flag. Instead of dealing with repairs that cost an arm and a leg, a lot of folks are just dumping their Teslas in the scrapyard and calling it quits. And let me tell you, nobody's exactly lining up to rescue these banged-up EVs. They're more like unwanted potatoes. No one wants to deal with them. Now, let's fast forward to the future. Used cars are starting to feel a bit like last year's iPhone. Nobody's jumping at the chance to buy them. It's like, thanks, but no thanks. Kind of scary, right? But that might just be the way things are heading. And let's not forget about the whole repair situation. It's not just about fixing dents and scratches on electric cars. There's a whole other can of worms to deal with. Software updates. These EVs are like your smartphone on steroids, always craving updates to keep everything ticking smoothly. We're talking about software that handles everything from batteries to brakes to those fancy driver assist features. Now, let me tell you about those updates. They can be a real headache. Imagine having to trek all the way to the dealership just to sort out some software snacks. And let me tell you, it's no walk in the park for the folks at the shop either. They're sitting around, twiddling their thumbs, waiting for the green light from the manufacturer to get things fixed up. Right now, while electric cars are still relatively new, most folks are covered by warranty. But what happens when that warranty clock stops ticking? Without that safety net, those trips to the dealership could start feeling like daylight robbery. Now, you might be wondering if there's any hope of reducing these repair costs. Well, according to experts like Pacheco, it's still pretty unclear. You see, with gigacasting, there's currently no known cost-effective process for repair. And when it comes to other construction methods, like structural batteries, things get even trickier. If there's a problem with the battery, you might end up having to replace the entire thing, which, as you can imagine, can rack up some severe costs. Sure, some automakers are working on solutions, like setting up facilities for battery manufacturing or establishing regional hubs for repairs. However, not all OEMs are on board with these initiatives, which could spell trouble for EV owners down the line. While reducing production costs is crucial for making EVs more affordable, it shouldn't come at the expense of higher repair costs. After all, no one wants to be stuck with a car that's basically a write-off after a minor fender bender. Automakers need to step up and prioritize solutions that address these issues head-on if they want to keep consumers happy in the long run. Let's wrap up today's video. Before signing off, subscribe to the channel and like the video.